what's up family it is your girl fire starter Jess. i pray that you guys are having an amazing week i don't have much to say today i just wanted to come over here and encourage a few people even if it's just one i just want you to hold on okay because i want to share something that i haven't really shared i know i share a lot of keep your head up keep going press on hold on to god hold on to jesus know that he's coming through i know i share a lot of those words and i want to give you guys context on why i share messages like those so i truly gave my life to christ back in 2023 for real i've always known god i've always had a relationship with god it has not always been a devoted, uh, you know, I didn't put in a lot of effort. I wasn't dedicated. I, I shared in one of my videos that I, as a matter of fact, I was an adulterer. Um, God was faithful. He showed up for me in ways that now looking back over my life, I'm like, God, I didn't even deserve it. But this is just how he is and who he is and man i i just don't know how people can go through life all of their life completely separated from god because to acknowledge being loved so well unconditionally from a god even though you weren't even living by his statutes or his ways or anything. And now, you know, I've made up my mind because I see I've been I've always been blessed. I've always been provided for, taken care of, experienced supernatural things and I'm just like, God, wow. You your love is so pure. It's so real. And so this is why I share those messages. And so when I gave my life to God wholeheartedly in 2023, a lot of things happened. So prior to that, I was on the fence. So I was living, saying I was serving God, but I was living in fornication. And I still had ways that weren't kingdom. And so if it was, if he had came back, at any time prior to this, I already knew what the outcome would have been if I was being real and honest with myself. And so finally, he did a thing and he started to call me back to him. And let me tell y'all, it didn't feel good because it meant that I had to give up all the things that I had been clinging to, all the things that kept me in that fence living state. And so prior to that, I started to get like all these different medical issues. Like I was going through respiratory issues and I was in and out the hospital that one year so many times and I had never really gotten sick prior to that. And it was just like respiratory things and viral things and just different things going on in my body and I just didn't understand it. And one day it finally dawned on me like, duh. Like, God, you got my attention. And so, because truly, if I'm being honest, the word of God says that the wages of sin is death. And so I, the way that I was living, there were ultimately consequences for my actions. And I think a lot of us kind of like, you know, hitch scop around those things, but that's the reality. You know, we would much rather want to not believe that there's no God and that there's no enemy and that there we could just do whatever we want to do. And that's just not the truth. And so long story short, I was dealing with all those issues up until 2023 and basically still 2023, I had that decision to make. And I finally got to the place where I was able to make the decision. And it wasn't easy and I didn't do it on my own. The Holy Spirit helped me because, man, it was hard. But I made the decision. And so once I made the decision, all hell broke loose. 
And I don't know if it's talked about a lot um, on any platform. Like, I, I'm, I, I haven't heard any messages. But the reality of it is when you're coming out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Because, see, the enemy doesn't care if you say that you love God. If you say that you love God, but you're not really living that lifestyle and it don't all add up and you're out there playing yourself for a fool, he doesn't really care. He'll let you live that life because he know ultimately you're his. And so when you are when you have a made up mind and you have truly crossed over from darkness into light, he starts to rear his head. And so all hell broke loose in my life. So many things happened last year. So many things I shared. I had a back injury. I'm out of work. Income lost. I went months without any kind of income. But the, the grace of God carried me. My car literally was in the shop sometimes twice a week. I was on a bus. I've gone through so many things. My car got booted. I swear my car got booted maybe three times up until this moment from 2023. And all of these things are kind of like to anger me, to bring me to a low place, to let me backtrack because the truth of the matter is it's easy to kind of like go out and make my own decision and try to like play catch up and make my own way. I'm going to go get me a job and hustle and get the bag and do all. It's so easy to go back to all of this because that's what I knew. However, where God has me right now, and I'm not just talking, I'm not saying life in Christ doesn't require you that you work. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying at that point in my life, I depended on my ways and how I thought it was supposed to be done and where God has me right now I'm in a different place I'm literally like seeking him and he guides me and helps me nav navigate and so I don't make my own decisions on my own anymore I'm because I was going around a, a circle year after year not really getting anywhere not really producing anything because I was literally in a system that the enemy kept me in it's a cycle it's a stronghold and because he keeps you away from your purpose and god's plans and all those things um and the, the truth of the matter is that god has the final say god has the final say so i want to say that but i wanted to come over here today and really encourage someone because like i was saying all hell broke loose and every single time when all these things were happening in my life transpiring in my life people that I thought that wouldn't hurt me hurt me to the core and I felt like it was gonna break me even as I'm sharing with you guys I can feel some of the pain that I felt in that time because I just couldn't think because I know me I know my character I know myself I wouldn't dare hurt people like that so I'm thinking you know people will treat me the way that I've treated them but I also am learning so much right um about valuing myself and loving myself and not allowing certain things you know in my space and you know, when you allow certain behaviors, you have to take accountability that you have allowed something to go on too long. And it's harder now to correct a thing if when it first happened, you didn't make a decision in that moment to address it, right? And so it's a lot to have that has to do with those things. But a lot happened. And the Spirit of God carried me and saw me through it all. And even now, I haven't arrived because just the other day I was just facing another thing. And I just remember sitting in my car and saying, it pays to serve the Lord. It truly pays to serve the Lord. It does. I'm going to read you all the scripture. This is in James 1, and this is what I feel the Holy Spirit was 
saying that I should encourage you guys with. I don't want to give you all my words. I want to give you all the words straight from the Bible. Who influences the Bible? The Spirit of God. And so these are his words through his sons and his daughters, his vessels. And it says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I'm going to stop it there, but I think that you guys should go and read James, the book of James for yourself. There's so much meat in that book. I'm going to leave it right there, though. Let's read that last one again. So let it grow. This is verse 4. So this is James chapter 1. I started at 2. And this is verse 4. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Thank you, Lord. So... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That saying that people love to say, oh, we aren't perfect. I don't like that saying because I believe that if you're a follower of Christ, that God is perfecting you. This is even telling you, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. It's, it pays to serve the Lord. I'm telling you, these last few months, I wouldn't be standing here in my right mind. I have four little people that are dependent on me to nurture them, to guide them, to provide for them. You know, all of these things, I can only do it because of the Spirit of God. We take so much for granted. We put so much emphasis on what we can do and our abilities. We take for granted the fact that it is God that is at work in us that we're able to move, function, breathe, have our being, every cell function in the way that it should, every, you know, joint and bone and everything in the body, the organs, everything, we take those things for granted. Because there is not an alarm going off every day that, oh, you need to refuel or replenish. You need to do this. You need to do that. God has worked all of that out. So we take it for granted. So the place that I'm in, I'm in a strange place because I've never been here before. I knew how to get it on my own, depend on my own strength and my own ways and the ways that I know how. And where I am right now is total dependence and reliance on God. And I'm not saying that I get it right because, boy, I have to, I have times when I have to be like, God, I'm so sorry. I just got ahead of myself because it's not natural for me. But I can say that I truly have joy. And I didn't even really grasp where it says that joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's a weapon that you can utilize when the enemy throws these darts at you. 
So every attack that he's thrown at me, I was able to overcome with the joy of the Lord. Standing in that moment and recognizing, okay, God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any tongue rise up against me, it shall be condemned and put to shame. God, you're in this with me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And then I will partner with the Holy Spirit and I will take my time and not humanly respond to everything. Because the word of God says the weapon of our warfare isn't carnal. Now, there are some things that you're going to have to address in the natural. But even those things, you're, you should be in partnership with the Spirit of God to get you through the natural things. Because the truth is we don't know everything. The other day I was stranded and I really wanted to just in anxiety and frustration and everything that was happening in the heat of the moment. I just wanted to respond to the situation in my human way naturally curse out the person on the phone that was telling me what wasn't what was supposed to be isn't and I wanted to tell her about her parts and just like act out and, and the Holy Spirit stopped me in that moment and said that's not productive and there was a lot of waiting that happened in that moment because I had to wait on him to give me my next move. But I'm telling you guys, when it was all, all over and when it was all said and done, the outcome was greater. And even after that, there was another attack because, and I'm telling y'all, like I felt wiped from that first attack. I felt wiped. Even though I responded well and, I, you know, I partnered with the Holy Spirit. But you, you know, you feel because we are not just a, a spiritual being. We have three parts. And so my physical, you know, was trying to like regain strength. And then there was another attack. And also God handled it. I just want you guys to stay encouraged. I want you to stay in the fight. There's a scripture coming to my mind. I'm going to share it with you. So I'm going to leave you all with this scripture. This is what the Lord just dropped in my spirit. Therefore, this is Hebrews 12, by the way. Hebrews 12, and I'm reading from the very first one. And this is, I'm going to... Hold on one second. I'm going to go for the New Living Translation. It's currently on the NIV, but I like the NLT. I like all of them, but not all of them. But yeah, for the most part, I always go between New Living and Message. Sometimes I like Amplify too. So... This says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let's, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging word God spoke to us as his children? He said, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he love and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. 
as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his child at all or children at all. You guys go ahead and check that whole chapter out for yourselves. And I also wanted to share this with you guys. It is Matthew 24 verse 13 to kind of wrap it up about what I was saying about just staying the course trusting God through your process as he develops you and refines you and does a work in you as he perfects you and I wanted to say that Matthew 24 is basically Jesus telling us all the things that will happen in the end but verse 13 says but the one who endures to the end will be saved and so that is why I wanted to come over here to encourage you guys on today because it's not easy following Jesus, but it is beneficial. The Bible also lets us know that the way that leads to eternity with the Father is a narrow way. And if you really learn to read the Bible, you will learn to really put it all together. Jesus is the way. There's no other way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father but through him. The Bible also lets us know that few find their way to God, to eternity. But the way that leads to destruction, that path is broad. And so, and it's basically open for anyone to take. And I just wanted to come over here and let you know that you're going to lose some things. You're going to face some challenges, but you are able to get through it if you truly partner with God. Depending on your own way of doing things and figuring it out and the struggle of all of that will only const constantly end you up to a familiar place and then you're gonna be hard on yourself because you're like, I've been here before. Or you get to a, a destination that you believe that you should have and then you can't even maintain the destination or the promise or any of those things because it's not. it's outside of God's will. It's outside of God's way. And it's just so much that could be said, but I didn't want this video to be long. I just really wanted to come over here and quickly remind you guys to hold on. Hold on to the things of God. Remember that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And just as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts above, our, above ours. Allow him to guide you. Allow him to teach you. You're going to have to unlearn some things. If you need to meditate on some scriptures, that's going to help you to get your mind right. Because that's another thing. We're not filtering out the bad with the word of God. We, we are so quick to jump on trends worldly things to try to you know overcome or change or whatever but there are principles right here in the word of god that are beneficial so i challenge you to trust in god to follow his lead take advantage of all the principles that he has given us you have access right now And I pray that you find your way. So I don't want to make it long. Y'all go on and be blessed. Know that I love you. I am praying for you for real. And know that God loves you even more. Until next time, peace.